Hello kids! Welcome to Science Class. I'm Miss Malulim, your teacher for this week lessons. We are now in quarter 2, week 6. Our most essential competencies for this week is the beneficial and harmful interactions among living things. Have you ever wondered how beneficial or harmful are interactions among living things? Do you ever recall some? Example with your pet dogs. What do you usually do together? How about with your environment? Did you have a gardening experiences with your parents? Did you see a butterfly? How about the flowers, the plants? What do you observe about them? This is just a preview of what you will learn this week. Do you want to know more? Come on, let us know more about the beneficial and harmful interactions among living things. For this week, you are expected to describe the beneficial effects of interactions among living things such as mutualism, commensalism, predations, parasitism, and competition. After watching this video lessons, you are expected to answer the exercises in your modules. Here are the list of modules that you need to accomplish. Before we proceed, let us know the meaning of the important words that you may encounter during the discussions of lessons. Number one, beneficial. It means helpful or good to something or someone. The second one, harmful. It has a bad effect on something else. And lastly, interactions. Interactions is a kind of actions that occurs as two or more organisms have an effect upon one another. Let us first analyze the following questions. What do you notice about the pictures? Is there an interaction among them? How do you think they interact with each other? These questions will be answered as we go on to the discussions of the lesson. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go! What living things do you see in the pictures? Yes, very good! The living things in the pictures are the butterflies and the flowers. Where do you usually see a butterfly in a flower? Did you experience seeing a butterfly in a flower having an interaction? What can you say about it? The butterflies and the flowers' interactions is beneficial for the both of them. Why? Because flowers provide food for the butterflies. In exchange, butterflies helps in reproductions of land by transporting pollen from one flower to another. This interaction is called as mutualism. Mutualism is a type of interactions in which both organisms benefit from each other. This is also called as symbiosis or give and take relationship. In short, the organisms involved in these interactions get something from each other. They are both benefited from the interactions. Just like what happened to the flowers and butterflies, they both get something from each other. Do you know what ants is? Did you already see it? If you are going to describe the ants, how are you going to describe it? Did you know? that ants and the apids have a mutualistic relationship. Ants and apids share a well-documented relationship, which means they both benefit mutually from their working relationship. Apids produce a sugary food for the ants. They provide food for the ants. In exchange, the ants take care and protect the apids from predators and parasites. What do you call the interactions of living things where both species are benefited? Yes, very good. It is a mutualism. 
Most of the time, we celebrate our birthday by preparing a food in a small party. We also invited our friends to celebrate with us. When they come, we receive a gift from them. So, does mutualism shown in these situations? Yes, the interactions between you and your friends is a mutualism. Why? Because you get something from each other. You receive a gift and then at the same time, your friends is able to enjoy and eat food from your party. Look around your environment. Can you tell me which other relationship is a mutualism? What living things do you see in the picture? Very good! The living things in the picture is a tree and a fern. Are they having an interaction? Yes, they have an interaction. What do you think will be the effect of their interaction? Is it beneficial or harmful? In the interactions between the fern and a tree, one of them benefited while the other does not benefit nor harm. The ferns are benefited by these interactions because the tree provides home for them, while the tree doesn't benefit by these interactions neither harm. The interactions between the tree and a fern is known as commensalism. Commensalism is a type of relationship between two living organisms in which one organism benefits from the other without harming it. Just like what happened to the tree and fern. The fern is benefited from the tree because tree provides home for them while the tree doesn't benefit nor harm from their interaction. By the way, the species that gains the benefit is called the commensal, while the other species that is not benefited nor harmed from the interactions is called as host species. Another example is the golden jackal and the tiger. The golden jackal followed the tiger to eat the leftover from the tiger's gills. From these interactions, the golden jackal benefits while the tiger doesn't benefit nor harm. Did you watch a movie Nemo? Did you know that Nemo is a clownfish? Clownfish has a commensalistic relationship with the sea anemones. Clownfish hide in a poisonous sea anemones which protect them from a larger fish. The clownfish benefits and nothing happens to sea anemones. Again, in commensalism, organisms benefit from the interactions without harming the other organisms. How do you describe the interactions between the bird and a tree? Yes, very good. The interactions between the bird and a tree is a commensalism. Why do you think they have a commensalism interactions? Very good. They have a commensalism interactions because one of them benefited, which is the bird. The tree provides shelter and protections for them, while the tree does not benefit nor harm from their interactions. Remember, Commensalism is a relationship between two living organisms in which one organism benefits without harming the other organisms. Who among you see an interaction between the frog and an insect? What do you observe about it? Do you have an idea what will happen during their interactions? What do you think will happen to the frog? How about the insect? The interactions between the frog and the insect is called as predation. A frog, which is the predator, kills an insect wherein insect serves as the prey for food. In these interactions, frog gain benefits while the insect was killed. Predations is a type of interactions in which one organism called predator 
molecules and its another organisms called prey. Here are some of the examples of predations. Spiders spinning webs to trap and kill insects. Lacewing eating mites and small caterpillars. Lizards catching and eating insects. Tigers stalking and killing deer in the forest. Bears fishing salmon out of the river. As you can see in the predations, one organism benefits, which is the predator, while the other is being killed, the prey. If you were to ask, is predation harmful? If we are going to see the example, we can say that predation is harmful interactions. Why? Because one organism is being killed. Though it is harmful, but still, it is considered as an important part of a healthy ecosystem. Predators remove a vulnerable prey, leaving more food for the survival and success of a healthy prey animals. In addition, predators help to reduce the negative impacts that their prey may have on the ecosystem if they become too abundant or if they stay in one area for too long. Also, by controlling the size of prey populations, predators help slow down the spread of disease. What do you call the interactions where one organism is consumed or killed while the other is benefited? Very good! It is a predations. Look at the pictures. How do you think the rooster interacts with the earthworm? Yes, in these interactions, the rooster is benefited while the earthworm is killed because it serves as the food for the rooster. Do human can also called predator? Yes, human can be also called as predator because human eat animals like chicken, pig, fish, and many more. So those animals are the prey and we, the human, are the predator. Have you ever been bitten by the mosquito? How does it feel? Did you feel itchiness? Feeling itchiness is one of the effects of the mosquito bites. Aside from this, what else do you think will happen? Mosquito bites can also bring diseases like dengue. So, based on this, what can you say about the interactions between the human body and the mosquito? The interactions between the human body and the mosquito is considered as parasitism. Parasitism because the human, which is the host, is affected negatively while the mosquito or the parasites benefits from the relationship. The mosquito gets food, but on the other hand, the human is exposed to many diseases. So, what are we going to do to prevent us from getting bitten by the mosquito? The best ways that we can do is to always clean our surroundings. Why? Because dirty environment becomes the feeding area of different insects like mosquito. And we can also apply off lotions to protect our body from the mosquito bites. Parasitism is a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other organism is harmed. The organisms that benefit is called the parasites, while the organism that is harmed is called the host. Parasites have two types, the internal and external. The internal parasites or the endoparasites is a parasite that lives in the internal organs or tissue of its host. Have you experienced having a worm or volate in your stomach? That is the example of parasites. The worms that lives inside our body is called the internal parasites or the endoparasites. Do you have a pet dog? 
did your dog experience having a ticks and fleas? What do you observe happen to them when they have a ticks and fleas? In the interactions between the dog and the ticks, one is being harmed, which is the dog or the host. The ticks, which is also known as parasite, can bring different diseases to the dog. They are also benefited because, aside from the shelter, they also feed by the dog's blood. The ticks is an example of external parasites or ectoparasites, parasites that found outside the body of the host. We found out that dog is harmed from the interactions between the ticks. So, what are you going to do to prevent your dog from getting a ticks? Some of the ways that you can do to prevent your dog from getting a tick are The first one, always clean their surroundings Second, groom them regularly And lastly, do regular tick and regular checkups Do you feel something itchy from your head? What do you think is that? Yes, maybe those are Elisa or Kuto. Is Elisa a parasite? Yes, lice is an example of a parasite. How would you describe the interactions between the human head and the lice? Very good, the human head and the lice have a parasitism interactions. Why do you think their interactions is parasitism? Very good. Their interactions is parasitism because the lice is benefited while the human head is affected negatively. Who among you have a small garden or have a plants in your home? Did you see an interaction? Is there an interaction? Yes, very good. There is an interaction. Plant interactions is one of the examples of competition. Competition. If you hear the word competition, what comes up with your mind? Yes, very good. Most of the time, if we hear the word competition, we know that they fight for what they want and what they need. This is also what happened to the plants. They compete for what they need like space, sunshine, nutrients, and water. This interaction is called competition. Competition is an interaction in which two organisms compete for the things needed for survival. Organisms may compete for food, sunshine, space, shelter, water, and other things that they need for survival. Each organism in this kind of relationship is a competitor. Competitions have two types, the interspecific and intraspecific competition. In interspecific competitions, Different species compete with one another for their needs and for them to survive. While in intraspecific competitions, there is a competition between the same species to get what they need. These are the examples of competition. Same and different species compete for their needs and survival. In the first pictures, you would see that tiger compete for the foods. This is an example of intraspecific competitions because tiger belong with the same species. In the second and the last pictures, it shows the interspecific competitions. Different species like different animals and different plants compete for their needs. Do you watch Pinoy Big Brother? What kind of interactions do you think will take place among the housemates? Very good! The interactions between the housemates is a competition. Why do you say so? 
Yes, competitions because the housemates compete with each other to be a big winner. How do you describe the competitions? Very good. Competition is an interaction where organisms compete for the things needed for survival. Remember, there are five major types of species interactions, wherein it can be beneficial or harmful interactions among living things. The first one is the mutualism. Organisms involved in these interactions benefit from each other. Second is the commensalism. One organisms benefit from the other without harming it. Third, predations. A biological interactions where one organism, the predator, kills and eats another organism, its prey. Fourth, parasitism. One organism benefits and the other organism is harmed. Lastly, competition. Two organisms compete for the things needed for survival. The environment is a collection of living things, the biotic and non-living things, the abiotic. There are many kinds of interactions between organisms and their environment. Organisms interact with each other and their environment to meet their basic needs and survive. Some interactions are beneficial, others are harmful. There are also interactions in which Populations of organisms are neither benefited nor harmed. All these interactions take place in an ecosystem. If you are going to choose from the interactions, which of these describes your relationship with your friends? Me? If I'm going to describe my relationship with my friends, I would say that we have a mutualistic relationship. Because we get something from each other. After knowing all the interactions, we found out that some of this may be harmful, like the interactions with the lice and mosquito. So, what are you going to do to prevent you from lice and mosquito? Very good! The best way that you can do is to always clean the surroundings and always observe the proper hygiene. Before we end this lessons, I would like to leave you these questions. Which of the interactions is beneficial? How about the harmful interactions? What makes them beneficial and harmful? Did you understand the lesson? If not, you may go back to the lesson presented in your modules. If it is clear, congratulations! You may now answer the exercises in your module. Good luck!